In the last episode of this series, I showed you how to code a performance metric using CAGR over the mean or the average drawdown. And I explained why this works so much better than the more often used CAGR over maximum drawdown. In this episode, I turn my attention to a completely different performance metric and show how the coefficient of correlation, or alternatively, the coefficient of determination, R squared, can both be used on an equity curve to provide a measure of performance of the parameter values being optimized. And because these coefficient-based metrics are calculated in a completely different way to the CAGR over mean drawdown, they can often provide different rankings of parameter values. I still consider both of them really excellent metrics, and I'll let you decide which you prefer. In the introduction, I said that I consider the CAGR over mean drawdown and also the coefficient-based metrics like R squared are both really great performance metrics to use for any optimization. I covered the coding for CAGR over mean drawdown last time, and in this episode, I'll do the same for R squared. However, I have to admit that I haven't fully decided myself which of these actually performs best, and maybe each of them are better in different circumstances. But at the end of the episode, I'll let you know the details of a small piece of research that I'll be starting soon that will hopefully help me to decide which of these works best in different circumstances. So stay tuned until the end to hear about that. OK, so let's turn our attention now to how we can use the coefficient-based performance metrics. So as I've covered before, a performance metric helps us to measure how well a system performs. And specifically, when performing an optimization, it's the performance metric that will give us the values in order for us to construct either a surface or a profile like those that you see here. And therefore, it's this value that will help us to answer the question, which parameters are the most robust or which are the best. And so now let's start to focus our efforts on the correlation coefficient and using that as a performance metric. Now the correlation coefficient also has a number of other names. So you might hear it termed the Pearson correlation coefficient or simply Pearson's R value. But what this metric does is measure the strength of the linear relationship between two variables. And when used in conjunction with an equity curve, it can be used to measure the performance of a system or a set of parameters. But before we look at the use of Pearson's R in this way, let's first take a look at how it's calculated. So remember that the correlation coefficient provides a measure of how strong a relationship is between two variables. And so at this stage, we'll just use X and Y to illustrate the point. Now, the underlying calculation for this relies on the principle of the line of best fit, as you can see here. And when all of the observable points have a perfect positive correlation, the Pearson R has a value of plus one. And so here, all of the observable points lie on an upward sloping line. Now, when it's a perfect relationship, but in the opposite direction, here, the R value will have a value of minus one. And whenever there's no relationship between the points, then the value is zero, which is all fairly straightforward. But how do we use this concept in order to measure the performance of a set of parameters as part of an optimization? Well, we start by looking at the equity curve that is produced from the backtest then we can attribute a point to each of those values. And of course, if we have a series of points like this, then we can perform a linear regression and calculate the R value, which is effectively a line of best fit through each of these points. 
Now, when we look at any equity curve, what is it that are the desirable characteristics of that equity curve? Well, clearly, we want to see it rising as the time goes from left to right. But also, we want to see the minimum amount of fluctuation around that centre line. Because if the fluctuation is low, then it means that the curve is a steady growth without any major drawdowns. And so the value that we're aiming for, of course, is positive one. Now, clearly, you'll never get that because you'll never have an equity curve that just grows in a linear manner. But the closer we are to it gives an indication of the quality of the system and the quality of the growth in the equity curve. Now, of course, if you get a negative R value, then this is indicative of a losing system because it will mean that the equity curve is falling. So if we're now comparing all of the different parameter values in an optimization, we're looking for those that have the highest R value as being indicative of those with the best and most clean equity growth. Now, there is just one point that I want to refer to here, and this is about the position sizing methodology that you're using during the backtest. So you have to understand that the R value is predicated on a linear regression model, i.e. a straight line. And so this expects linear growth in the equity curve, as we see in the blue line here. It doesn't expect this type of growth, exponential. And so if you're using a position sizing strategy in your system, that increases the position size as the equity grows, then that will naturally lead to an exponential growth. And so when performing backtests using this performance metric, you have one of two options. You can either use a fixed position size or else use a normalization process at the time the performance metric is calculated. So what you'll do here is effectively produce a pseudo equity curve that's based on trades if they all had the same position size throughout the whole of the test. Now, in the code that I show to you in a moment, the approach I use is that latter one. So after the back test has completed, we reprocess each of the trades, but calculate what the profit or loss would have been for a fixed position size value. And that then allows us to perform the linear regression calculation properly. OK, so what does this calculation actually look like? So this is the standard notation using values of X and Y to represent the two variables. And so for us in our calculation here, X would represent the time component and Y would represent the equity. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with statistics, this can appear as a relatively daunting equation, but there really is nothing to worry about, and to put this calculation into code isn't that difficult, as you'll see in a moment. Now, you've heard me talk previously about the coefficient of correlation, which is R, but also the coefficient of determination, which is called R squared. And so to calculate R squared, it really is as simple as squaring the value of the coefficient of correlation. But which of these is it that we should use in order to calculate our performance metric for our system? Well, there's just a couple of points to explain. Firstly, if you square a negative value, obviously you have a positive result. And so if you are using R squared in order to score your system, then you must make sure that you retain the sign. Otherwise, you could have an incredibly badly performing system with a downward slope that ended up giving you a good R-square value. However, let's just take a step back and think about this for a moment. Whenever we perform an optimization, what we're really interested in is the rank of the values for each of the parameters. And so considering that, if you simply square the original values, the ranking will remain unchanged. And so the simple answer is that it doesn't actually matter if you use R or R squared. They will both rank your parameter values in exactly the same order. 
And so because of this, it's just one step less if you're going to use the coefficient of correlation, r, as compared to r squared. And so that's what I tend to do. So hopefully you now have a good understanding of how both of these coefficient-based metrics are calculated, but also how they get applied to the equity curve in order to obtain a measure of success. So next I'm going to show you how to code these in MQL5, but of course the principles can apply to any programming language. So click top right now to go to the next part.